everybody! So today I'm going to upload a little floral watercolor painting tutorial here on my YouTube channel. And before I jump into the tutorial, I just wanted to talk about the materials that I'll be using in this video. So the watercolor paints that I'll be using are the Marie's watercolor. I did a review on these a few videos back. They are under $10, really nicely pigmented, probably some of the best um, affordable watercolors you can buy. I will link both that review video and a link to this product in the description box down below. And then I'm actually doing something new today, new to me. Um, I picked up this book. It's a, a ready to paint book by Wendy Tate and it's watercolor flowers. So inside this book, you have all sorts of these sheets. I'll show you this one since I tore it out, um, that you can tear out and they have different they have different floral designs on them. So they're kind of on like a parchment paper. So what you do is you take this and you sandwich some graphite paper between this and your sheet of watercolor paper and then trace over it to transfer the image so that you can paint it. And I think this is a really great tool for people who want to get into watercolors but are intimidated by the drawing part of painting or the composition. And for me, um, this is just a really nice way to do a quick uh, painting without having to take all the time to think about the drawing and the composition. Um, it just allows me the, the freedom of being able to get it on the page and then have some time to paint. So um, the thing about this is, I believe it states in the book that while you, if you do a painting with these, you can um, like, you can give them or sell them for charity, you can hang them on your wall, you can give them away to someone, but you can't sell them because these are Wendy Tate's designs, so you can't make profit um, off of using this product to create your paintings, which makes sense. So um, just keep that in mind if you are going to pick up this book. There's also on the inside cover, it shows all of the other ready to, ready, ready to paint books that Wendy offers. So. There's um, Boats and Harbors, London, Landscapes, Trees and Woodlands, Venice, Barns, Tulips, Cats and Kittens, um, all sorts of different things. So there's a whole line of these. I think they're really neat. I think they're a way to um, take a more relaxed approach to the watercolor process because you already have um, kind of the, the hard part is, is done for you. So you can go ahead and have the fun of painting. So. Um, I did not use her instructions in the book, which may be helpful to those of you who are beginners, and I'll probably go through and just see what she has to say and how she did each of these paintings as well. But I just went ahead and did the tracing and then I painted it, um, the colors and in the way that I wanted to. But there are step-by-steps for each of the traceable pieces. She tells you what colors to use and um, you know how to apply the, the paint and, and some of that stuff. So um, I recommend this. I picked it up at my local Hobby Lobby with a 40% off coupon for around $11. You can also get it on Amazon for close to that price. So now that I've gone over the materials that I am using today, we are going to go ahead and jump into the painting. To start out this painting, I'm just going to go over all three of the flowers with a very light wash of color. The four colors of paint from the Marie set that I have on my palette are lemon yellow, viridian green, rose, and magenta. So I'll be using the rose and magenta in the flowers and I'm kind of varying my washes a little bit as I go over the flowers. The top one will have more of, of the rose color and then the next, the second flower will have a little more of the magenta and uh, just to create a little differentiation between the flowers since they are placed so closely together. Kind of a side note as well while you're watching is that I have tried out a lot of different watercolor palettes and for when I'm painting at my desk this five dollar square dinner plate from Target is by far my favorite thing to paint on. I really like that on ceramic the paint will stay spread out um, when you mix it rather than beating up like it does on plastic so I definitely recommend. I'm adding just a little more pigment to the center of each flower because that will be the part of the flower where the color is the richest because the most shadow is cast down in the center. So I'm already starting to show that um, even in these light washes. So 
So now I'm going to begin painting the buds and the leaves. And if you take a look at my palette, you'll notice that when I mixed the lemon yellow and the viridian, I didn't mix them together completely to make one solid color. Because what I like to do um, when painting leaves is to pick up a little bit of each tone on my brush and some of that in between and just kind of lay the colors down and let them do what they're going to do. I, I like to have some variation. I don't want everything to be one um, solid color of green. I will continue to build the variation within the leaves while the paint is still wet by dropping in additional bits of lemon yellow or viridian green. By painting wet on wet, I'm allowing the pigments to flow together and create an even surface while still retaining their unique color qualities. When I come to the stems, I'm first going to fill them in with some of the deeper green. And after I do that, while the paint is still wet, I'm going to mix some of that Viridian Green with the magenta to create kind of a, a deep um, purpley green. And then I am going to use that to add the darker parts of the stem in and create some more dimension. I find that when I use a limited color palette, it forces me to mix um, the different colors that I need and it really makes the piece come together better when it's the same four or five tones that are used throughout the painting. And I think this uh, is a really good technique because sometimes when you have a palette that has 20 or 30 plus colors, it can get a little overwhelming trying to decide which ones to pick or, pick or which ones to mix together. And this method really simplifies that a lot. I'm also going to use that same mixture of purple and green diluted out to create some of the shadows on the leaves. Later on in the painting, I will use this same tone in the centers and the deepest creases of the flowers so that all of the shadows throughout the painting match up. Now that those initial washes that I had put over the flowers are dry, I am going to go back in adding both some mid-tone washes in some places and some sharper, more defined details to um, differentiate the petals from one another on each flower. For this, I am using a slightly less diluted mix of the rose and magenta paints. Like I did earlier on the leaves, I am going to paint wet into wet on some of these petals and drop in some stronger areas of pigment. With that being said, I think I have explained most of the key points to my painting process with these flowers. So I am going to let you guys enjoy the rest of this video. I would like to thank you for watching and remind you to subscribe while you are here so that you don't miss out on the other art videos that I upload.